Hi, this is Joe Satriani. I'm here to tell you about my new album, The Elephants of Mars. Song number eight is East 104th Street, New York City, 1973. That just happens to be where my father grew up. Uh, it was called Spanish Harlem back then. I'm not quite sure if it's still called that now. I spent so many weekends there growing up as a kid, a suburban kid, you know, from Long Island. We'd go into the city to hang with the relatives. And as I got older, of course, I did a lot of hanging out. Clubs, I had shows there, we went to shows there. And uh, New York City in the 70s, oh my God, what a place. It was dangerous, it was falling apart, it was wonderful, it was an explosion of so much culture and music and coolness. Uh, uh, and I think in a way, you know, where I came from, it was, you know, hard rock and rock and kids' garages all over suburbia. But in the city, it was different. I, I felt the jazz, the funk, um, you know, the fusion, the soul uh, mixed in with the rock. It was everything. You know what? I said that Sailing was, uh, was my favorite track. I was wrong. That's my favorite track. And I think all of us, we had such an amazing time with Kenny tracking that one. Kenny had to come up with the one groove that would really work because my demo was done on top of two grooves, one straight and one swinging. And it was totally messed up and crazy, but, but he really jumped into it loving the task of trying to figure out how to represent that, those two grooves with one groove. Joe had combined two different drum beats and it ended up being, it's a shuffle or, or, or a 12-8 feel. But what he did on beat four, after the first measure, the original beat was So it was like straight for that one beat four from four and, and everything else was had that shuffle feel. I thought that was so friggin' cool. But in the end, Joe didn't like it. So I played the whole thing. I'm thinking things like, as you said, New York or LA West Coast production from the 70s. I'm thinking Steely Dan. I'm thinking Ber Bernard Purdy. You know, we've got a really, really cool melody going on on the guitar. We've got this kind of like almost jump and bass and we've got a tribute to these, you know, these 12-8 these kind of shuffle sounds. I'm gonna get this Rhodes out and this is the time for the Rhodes to really shine. I remember I was just stomping on the floor, just grooving out to this thing. Cause Kenny was just sitting on this pocket 12-8. And I was just like, I had a huge smile on my face and I was just like grooving out to this thing going, man, this album's incredible. And I get to use this Rhodes that I've had since I was like 12 years old. You get into the groove and it just doesn't let go until the very end. If you can just sit back and relax, this song is absolutely incredible. Ray put on a beautiful piano and um, Brian Beller put on this uh, just really great stand-up bass uh, and added some really cool riffs in between to help mark the passage of the vibes in the, in the song. It's got an upright bass on the demo, which is really unusual. I've never heard a Joe demo with an upright before. And I don't own an upright, I don't generally play upright, but a long time ago, uh, I worked at a company that had one of these KID upright basses. KID is like K-Y-D-D. -D. And uh, you see it right here, it's just the neck of an upright with an electric pickup. And it sounds amazing. It just sounds so authentic. The groove of the song is this really kind of deep trance-like thing. There's very few fills in that song. Uh, you just play the part, you play the groove, and you do it over and over and over and over again. Kenny was doing the same thing. You just play the groove. You choose your spots where you're going to do something different than the written part very, very carefully. Just maybe one or two or three parts in the entire song just to signify a little bit of a turn. I have these memories late at night, almost too tired to still be there, and all the moving lights and the lights of the buildings, the city noises, the vibes, the smells, everything. and. It always had this, this groove, this sound to me. I really tried to create a kind of a, you know, almost like a fusion record being done four in the morning in some basement studio somewhere. Uh, really gritty. So that's one guitar performance from the beginning to the end. It's the one song that grabs you at the, at the top and doesn't let you go until the very last Rhodes notes. 
It's, it's, it, it truly is beautiful. This is a, a beautiful sounding track too. I think Eric and Greg did an amazing job mixing this, this particular song. You know, it, it kind of made me think of, uh, you know, what would it sound like if there was like a classic Joe song that had upright bass instead of an electric bass? And maybe it would, it would sound something like this. Thank you. 